What up, what up? How we doing, everybody? My name is Gordon Scholler. This is Ryan McNeely. This is a new little show we like to call Swing the Salt. Today is the first of what we hope is going to be many shows moving forward. Uh, we're going to be a podcast predominantly, but we're going to have to be a little bit of everything. We're going to be some, some video game live streams, some TikTok content, get some stuff out to the people who watch the show. Uh, we got our own YouTube channel at Swing the Salt, so check us out. Uh, this is going to be underlying themes. Going to be basketball. We're yeah. Basketball players. Going to introduce ourselves a little bit more in a minute. Underlying theme will be basketball, but we're going to mix a little bit of everything: some TV shows, some movies, some video games. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of everything, so we're not going to be a one-trick pony. Uh, going to give you some insight, some advice, some opinions. We're going to debate. We don't really care whether you like it or not. We're just going to tell it like it is, or tell it how we feel. Uh, and with that, why don't, why don't you kick us off, Ryan? Introduce yourself. Tell yeah. the people, tell the world who you are and what you're about. Yeah. All right. So I'm Ryan. I went to Mount Sinai High School, played varsity there for three years. Um, at the end of my junior year and then early, like senior year, that's when I started getting recruited for college. And then I committed to St. Joseph's um, in the fall ish of my senior year. Um, been playing there now, been at St. Joe's for three years, but I've only played for two years. The first year was COVID. Obviously we didn't have a season. It's COVID. Um, yeah, but just finished up year two now looking to use my last two years to play, but I only have one more year of school left. So I'm going to hope to try to take my master's and use my last year for that, uh, child study major, which means I'm looking uh, to become a teacher. Um, and right now I'm in the off season, you know, trying to improve and doing some camps, working some camps as a counselor at Future Stars. Shout out Future Stars. Shout out Future and, Stars. And uh, doing a little bit of coaching <laughs> also. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So my name is Gordon Scholler. I'm from Smithtown. I uh, went to Smithtown West High School. Uh, played four years of varsity basketball in high school. Uh, I went to Lebanon Valley College originally uh, for my undergrad. Uh, played there for three years, graduated in three years. Uh, won a conference championship, played in the NCAA tournament, uh, transferred back home to St. Joe's, where I met this clown over here, uh, played my fourth and final season at St. Joe's after the COVID year, um, and now I'm a retired Hooper, uh, also had a, a secondary tennis career in my fourth and final year at St. Joe's, uh, joined the team because I had nothing better going on, and uh, the men's tennis team slid in my DMs, asked me to join the team. <laughs> um, uh, and won all conference after never playing before in two months. So fun fact about me, go tennis. Um, so yeah, I got my undergrad in accounting. I was the county major. I currently work at a uh, Stony Brook University. I work in the athletic department, handling all the accounting and financial aspects of Stony Brook athletics. Um, and yeah, retire Hooper. And uh, so talk to me a little bit, right? You know, you're, you're an active college basketball player. And I know what you're up to this time of year, right? You know, first we want to get into is, you know, just some, Typical off season for a college basketball player. I think that's the first topic we want to kind of hit because it's current events, right? Mm -hmm. So tell the people what are you up to right now. I know what you're up to. But let everybody know what, what's kind of a typical summer look like for a college basketball yeah. player. So for St. Joe's, obviously it's a different scenario. For those of you who don't know, it's a commuter school, so you know most colleges have dorms. Ours does not, which is an advantage and disadvantage. So in the off season, right, you're still around your teammates right um normally college with dorms when your season's over when your school year is over you go home and you're miles away from your teammates um for me it's different some of my teammates are down the road you know we're all within you know 20 15 mile radius so we can see each other pretty much all the time um so we are doing some summer leagues um you know doing some skill work on our own at the college we have a shooting machine like to do we have a weight room there so just trying to do a little bit of everything right you know improving your shot shooting on the shooting machine you know a lot of reps you know reps is very important in the off season um and just playing together and staying sharp and trying to stay well conditioned you know it's got to keep that balance and really get better at everything in the off season that's your time to get better you know you don't really get better as much during the season because you're kind of stuff during the season yeah you're kind of following a game plan you're fitting your system the off season is really where you have time to yourself to get better at the stuff you want to get better. So when you're in your season, 
that stuff carries over and you can use that to fit whatever system, you know, you're playing in. But yeah, finished season a couple months ago. Already been doing stuff, already been up to some things, but yeah, it's going pretty good so far. Yeah, it's I mean it's a year round commitment, right? It's like one season ends and like, you know, a couple weeks later you're already getting ready for next year, at least if you're doing it the right way. Always found it interesting. You mentioned like all the different components of um like what you do in the summer. I mean, as a as a college vessel player, right? You always gotta be working on your craft, right? Like working on your skills in the gym all the time. You do have to be in the weight room to some extent, working on your strength. Then you also gotta be in really great shape. And that's not even including like stuff you're doing outside of basketball, like school wise, career wise, all that stuff. And I always found it interesting and what I found is like a lot of guys, especially for like that freshman, sophomore year, like guys be like, all right, I'm just going to go live in the weight room and put on like mad muscle and like, you know, to try to get as big as possible, max out on the bench and the back squat. And it's like, that's not necessarily like what you should be doing for basketball. Like for basketball, you got to be, you don't want to just be a muscle head. Like you got to run around, you got to cut, get up and down the court. Like, so, you know, some guys will like, I mean, I think about you, right? Like you're like mainly off the ball, like catch and shoot guy, you run off screens and stuff like that. So if you just decided, Hey, I'm just going to commit myself to putting on 20, 25 pounds this summer, right? Like Mm -hmm. you'd have a very hard time playing the way you play now because like, that's not what you do. So like, it's a balance. There's a, there's a very, very much a balance. And I always, for me, I always like second guess myself a question like, all right, like what kind of balance should I have in soft season? Should I be like, should it just be even across the board? Should I be putting more time in the gym versus the weight room or more time in the weight room versus the gym? So I always find that interesting. I think a lot of players like lose sight of that. And then they come on campus, maybe they're a lot stronger or they come on campus and their skills are a lot better, but they've neglected their shape or they've neglected their strength, skills, whatever it may be. You have to do everything though. Like you do, yeah. You what you should really do, right? And I've been doing this. Like you got to think about things once your season ends that you want to improve on, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, you need to work on your weaknesses, right? So obviously, I've been in the weight room, right? Obviously, still working on my handle, stuff like that. But you also can't lose sight of the stuff you're good at. You still have to sharpen that stuff, like. I'm mainly a shooter, right? That's what I'm there to do, right? I shoot threes. I can't just not shoot threes at all in the off season and work on other stuff and come back and ex- you know expect myself to be the same shooter. You need to do everything, right? Obviously, I'm going to keep working on my shot, and then you can work on other stuff too, but it's a balance. You don't want to just focus on one thing. You kind of want to do everything at an average rate. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's the thing is too, like it's all about you want to be able to come in first day, of not just like practice not just like of the season because you know college basketball season doesn't start till october high school season doesn't start till november but like you want to come in first day of like pickup that first day where you meet the team you come together and play that's always like a really big that's like a big happening that's a big event for any college basketball program is that first day you guys come together for the new school year and you play together like so you want to make a good first impression you want to come in right away and start killing it off the bat you don't want to come in and like have to get into shape or have to be like find your shot again or like get your handles right. Like you want to come in fire on all cylinders and make a great impression right off the bat. Cause that first like pickup run, I think we've talked about in the past, like, you know, setting the, it sets the tone for a lot of stuff moving forward. So wanted to, wanted to ask you, cause I, I have some pretty strong opinions on this, like do's and don'ts for your first. So say you're incoming freshman, incoming transfer, new school, whatever. Do's and don'ts the first time you pull up for the first pickup of the new school year. And this can apply to high school too. Like if you're a high school freshman or sophomore or junior, whatever it may be, okay. you walk in the first day, like some do's and some don'ts. Because there, yeah. there's there's a pretty stark list for both ways. Yeah. Give, give me what you got. So, you know, for me, from my experience, my first pickup for college was when I was a junior in high school. Um, one of my teammates, Matt Hurt. Shout out, Matt. Mert. Um, uh, he took me down to a St. Joe's pickup run when I was a junior. So he was a freshman. Obviously, it was his first year at St. Joe's. So I was getting you know, involved in some college run, which is great. Um, but I came in there not knowing anybody. And I've never played you know, in a college gym before. And you know, I was kind of like a stranger there. But when you go there, you can't be like shy. You're allowed to be nervous, right? That's fine your first time doing something you're going to be nervous but you have to play with sort of like a chip on your shoulder almost like you have to come ready to go um don't just stand there and you know do nothing and hang out in the corner and do nothing like get involved play with confidence right it's okay to mess up it's pick up right and just try to put on a good impression right introduce yourself right like 
really get involved and get comfortable as soon as possible. I think that's one of the best ways. But some don'ts, some don'ts that you don't want to do a pickup. You do want to dress appropriately. That's probably the main thing for me, right? And outside of dressing appropriately, right, you do want to not be, like I said before, like you don't want to be too cocky, but you don't want to be too shy either. You yeah. got to find like that medium. But dressing wise, you got to dress appropriately. I, I think you just you gotta. I, I think you just gotta come in and you gotta come in looking like you're ready to go. You gotta come in looking like you're ready to go play pickup. Like you're about to go compete and play basketball. Like you cannot pull up. I'm sorry, and you and you guys can be like, "Oh, well, this is my this is my style, bro." No, you can't pull up in like your PJs. And a lot of people like wear like PJs into the gym now. I don't know why this is a thing. Like PJs and flip flops. Like your hoodies all the way up. Like you're zoned out. Like you look like you're about to go take a nap. Come into the gym. Look athletic, you know, have your shoes in hand or like in your bag or whatever, you know, where you just got to take off like one set of clothes, like one shirt or something like that, put something on, lace up your shoes, and you're ready to go. Come in ready to play. Don't come in. Look, you got to stretch, right? Stretching is like, you know how I feel about this. You got you to stretch a little bit. You can't come in and take like 30 minutes to stretch and hold up the entire pickup in the pro. You know what I'm saying? Because like, if, especially when you're like the freshman too and you're the new guy, you don't want, you know, if you have like, especially D3, right? Like you probably have like a little slot for pickup, right? Like you might have like a minute 15, a minute 30 to play before you get kicked out by another team. But meanwhile, you know, you wasted 20 minutes for the entire pickup because a bunch of guys were just sitting around stretching. Like, again, come ready to go. Don't just like, don't just waltz into the gym and like take forever to get ready. Come in, look like a basketball player. I think that's the biggest thing. Also, show up on time. Show up A. Like I've had, believe it or not, I had guys who like, freshmen they missed their first pickup like just didn't show up and i don't know what else they were doing because first couple days on campus of any school are not exactly like exhilarating so like you should be dying to go play pickup for the first time um and show up on time show up like show up a little bit early a couple minutes early you know find the gym especially if it's like a big campus and like you got to get to campus or you know go in say hi to your coach like meet your new teammates like those are all important things so show up on time and and be there and be present and be active show up ready to play basketball um so that those that's a big one for me because yeah. like some people they just kind of they don't get it they think they're just gonna walk in and and do their own thing i think piggybacking off what you said earlier too like between like playing with confidence you definitely gotta play with confidence you gotta play your game i think like so whatever you do best you should still be doing when you show up there but you also want to blend in a little bit with your team you want to play good team basketball like you gotta read the room yes yeah. read the room you gotta you know play good defense help defense Share the ball, pass and cut. If you're open, shoot the ball. If you're not open, swing that thing around. Like, don't try to be a hero. Don't be a pickup hero, right? Don't be the guy who, like, you know, oh, man, I've been working on, you know, three dribble step back between the leg, chuck up a 30-footer. Like, yeah, you might have been shooting that in your driveway in the offseason, but, like, you weren't really working on that. It's still not a good shot. Don't be a pickup hero. Right? I think that's one. And another one, and maybe I'm just triggered because I'm short. I, I can't dunk, but, like, Always, every year, like the first thing that happens, like everyone who can even touch the rim asks someone to throw them a lob, the first pickup. And it's like, yo, like I can make out more or less, like as soon as you walk in the gym, whether you're going to be able to like bang out or not. All right. So, but every guy's got to be like, jump up, like grab the rim and like, you know, make like a whole thing of it. It's like, yo, just come in, like shoot, shoot some threes, catch and shoot, like show off your shot. I don't, I'm not really interested in like if you can Steve Kerr dunk the ball. At your first pickup, where you just you know grab the rim and scream, like doesn't really impress me. But again, I could just be triggered because I'm short. I don't know if you can even touch the rim. But so those are those are my pet peeves in terms of one uh, more thing. And this has always been an issue for me. It's a pet peeve of mine. Don't wear a hat to pick up. Don't wear a hat. Don't wear a hat. Like take it off before you come in. It goes. It goes along with yeah. Look it goes along with looking like a basketball player when you yeah, walk. Yeah, it's in like a first impression. Do not wear a hat into a gym. Def, definitely, definitely not not advised. Definitely not advisable <laughs> to say the least. Um, but yeah, kind of going along with that general theme, right? Like, um, you know, that big adjustment. There's a, obviously a huge adjustment, right? When you go from high school to college, and I think you see it right away at that first pickup. Like, um, it's not just high school to college. It can even be like middle school to high school, like. You get hit right away with like, like wow, this there's a really big difference between these levels. Huge gap. 
huge gap. More so high school to college than middle school to high school, Definitely. I would say. Um, but I want to get your thoughts. Like, what do you consider to be like like the big adjustments to jump right off the page? It doesn't necessarily necessarily be basketball related. It could be like off the court. Like, obviously, if oh, you're yeah. going away to school, like, kind of stuff. like if you're living on your own for the first time, like that's a huge adjustment as well. Like, mm-hmm. to you, like, what are like the what's like the biggest adjustment like going from high school to college, and even even maybe even earlier, middle school to high yeah. school. Well, middle school to high school, obviously, size, athleticism, yeah. maturity, right? Um, and that's the same thing from high school to college, yeah. but at a way more like at an even higher level, at even yeah. higher level, way, yeah. way higher level. Um, so for me, right? Because I'm going to go off my experience here. I got kind of lucky. So my senior year, right, was COVID. I'm not saying that's lucky. That's one of the most unlucky things yeah, ever. Don't, right? don't be I, complimenting COVID here. I didn't have, I didn't have, <laughs> a, I didn't, you know, finish my senior year, but that following year, right? So I graduated in 2020, 2021, we didn't have a season. Um, so I wasn't a true freshman on the basketball court. My first year of college basketball, I was a sophomore. And to be honest, I don't think I would have been ready that freshman year. No one, no one's really re- like, I'd say like 95% of, freshmen in college are not ready when they step foot on campus or even by the end like they're not ready it's just yeah. you're going from high school you're playing with boys to playing men especially if you're at the division three mm-hmm. level right like you can get guys like you know especially with the covid rules and all the transfer waivers and everything you can have dudes who are like 25 26 years old playing kids who are like 17 18 years old yeah. that is literally man versus boy mm-hmm. right there and like some of that's like some of that's on you some of that's your own like effort what you put in but someone's just natural. Like, naturally, a 26-year-old is just, like, they're grown up. Like, and a 17, 18-year-old, like, I, I first day on campus, I was 135 pounds. Like, like dudes could have straight up just, like, picked me up with one hand and, like, threw me at the level I was playing at. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah. some of it's just natural. I hate to say it. Yeah, so, going back, right, I was definitely not ready my freshman year. But I got lucky. There was no season my freshman year. My first season was sophomore year. So when I finished my senior year at high school, right, we finished in around February. Um, Obviously, March was then the start of COVID. There was nothing to do, right? We're trapped in our houses. Play video games. Yeah, like there's not much to do. So I just took that as the opportunity to get better, right, with whatever I had. You know, I have a basketball hoop in my front yard, shooting on that almost every day. lifting but i don't have weights right so you do like body weight stuff and you couldn't really go to the gym the gyms were gyms shut were down. shut down yep uh i would run around my block um for conditioning right yeah we had that we had the 100 mile I had a lot of yeah 100 mile some testing, stuff. Yeah. yeah so we got off season stuff from our college right going in but we didn't have a season that year but i definitely think putting a lot of work in during covid and obviously i got lucky i grew two inches over COVID, right? I was I graduated at six foot. Came I'm still in, waiting to grow, so I can't really came but... in at six two. Um, put on like at least ten to fifteen pounds from my senior year of high school until my sophomore year of college. So I would say by the time we had our first college season, which was my sophomore year, I think I was kind of prepared and I was ready. But yeah, definitely would not have been ready if I had a season my freshman year. I think it year. definitely made a huge difference. Obviously it sucks we didn't have a season. Like I don't think anybody would have taken that over like I don't think anyone would have preferred to not have had the season, but I, I definitely understand, like, from your perspective, especially, like, that freshman year is such an adjustment period. You kind of got to bypass that a little bit and, like, be so much more ready than you would have been when you were, you know, it was your freshman year of basketball, but you were really, like, a sophomore. I think that, that definitely helps a lot. The huge advantage part was that year where we didn't have our season, we did get a couple practices we did, for we did. college. So my freshman year, we didn't have a season, but we did get some practices in March. Yeah, like so that practices. was my first opportunity to see what a college practice is like. Yeah. So I did get to see that before I even played in a game. Yeah. So I had a year off of that just to, you know, recognize, all right, this is a different level. It's different than high school. And I have to make that adjustment. And thankfully yeah. I had a year to do it. You yeah. Know, a year to myself to get better and learn the ins and outs of no, differences yeah, you, between high school and college. Took advantage of, of a not great situation and then you know made the most of it which is what you have to do i also think too huge adjustment from high school to college especially and even a little bit middle school to high school the life of the season 
so much different at both. Like, so middle school, I don't know if it's different now. I played nine games in middle school. I played 10. Okay. So ten, 10 and up. My school was on budget cuts or something. I don't know. But, you know, so you play 10 games. It's like a quarter. So it's like a two month season. It's like nothing. You, know, you don't practice on the weekends. You don't practice on the weekends. You know, everybody pretty much plays. There's five quarters. Five quarters. It's like, you know. It's a and B squad, everyone gets yeah, in. Yeah, everybody. It's like Shangri-La. Like, you know, it's just like <laughs> makes you feel good about yourself. Um, high school is November, like, 15th or 19th to... February, depending to on like, how far you go. Depending on how far you go. If you don't make the playoffs, you finish in early February. And if you make the playoffs, you're probably finishing mid-February. So... November to February, which is definitely more than middle school, but mm. still not a lot. I mean, you are playing through Thanksgiving break and Christmas break. College, though, the official season starts October 15th every year. And then depending on how far you go, you always go into mid-February. And then depending on how far you go in your conference tournament or whatnot, you could go into late February. If you make the NCAA tournament, you go to beginning of March. And that is a long, long, grueling season. And again, First day of practice is October, but like really, first day you step foot on campus, you're doing lifts with your team, you're playing pickup, you're doing conditioning sessions, like you're doing everything together. So like, really, your season starts like beginning of September, like when you first step foot on campus. And not only that, like if you're living away at school, right? Like St. Joe's, this is one of the advantages of St. Joe's is like you don't have to live away from home like at school all year long. But like when you're a freshman and like thanksgiving break hits and then even more so christmas break hits and you're away from home so for me i was at lebanon valley i was four hours away from home so like i got to come home over christmas break for like six days so we had a game on december 21st and i got home late that night and i drove back up to school the morning of december 27th and i practiced that day and we had a game like two days later so your christmas break typically for a college is like a month if you're a college basketball player it's six days and you're back up at school all your friends are back home getting drunk having a good time or whatever hanging out you know reminiscing about their freshman year of college you're up at school it's freezing unless you're playing down south somewhere i didn't have that luxury um you know and like you're homesick and it sucks and a little bit with same thing with like thanksgiving break so i think that's a real like wake-up call for a lot of college freshmen is like that first year in the length of the season and it's more games you play like 24, 25 games before playoffs. Um, it's just a lot. And it's every day. It's six days a week. There's lifts on top of it. You are you know, you got school on top, class going all year long. Like, it's a grind. And most high school freshmen, like, they're just not ready for that. And, yeah. like, par- that's partially on the high school system and how maybe, at least here on Long Island, maybe we need to, like, rethink how we, how we do, like, the high school basketball season because we're not preparing, like yeah. – our high school seniors are not prepared for the length and like the grueling nature um, of a college season. But again, a lot of it too. I think the biggest one we touched on is it's just like it's men versus boys when you first step foot on campus, yeah. like as a freshman. And something too with the length of the season. When I was in high school, I don't think I ever stepped foot once in the training room. I was never sore. I was no. never in pain. No, you don't even know what the, like. Yeah, know. like I, I don't even remember much what my training room looks like. In you high wouldn't school. even. I, I didn't even know. I don't think, yeah, I, went I, don't think I went once. <laughs> yeah. In college, I'm in the training room every day getting treatment, whether it's getting compression to squeeze the lactic acid out of my legs or ice or ice stretching calf. or rolling out with the, the yeah. foam roller. You got to do it because it takes such a toll on your body because there are longer practices in college. There are longer, grueling And practice. less days off. More physical too. Like, Way more intense. And those, <laughs> you can relate to this, those practices the first month of the season before you're playing games, those are the hardest practices by far because those ones, those ones usually go like two and a half hours. Those practices, it's like a lot of teaching. You got it's a, lot a lot of teaching, of stuff. and yeah, honestly, your coach is trying to like stuff. weed you out. Like, like usually the most physical drills because you're fresher yeah. during that part of the season, and your coach is kind of trying to see like who's about it, yeah. who's not about it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I was lucky. I pretty much avoided the training room altogether for the first three years of my career. I got to St. Joe's and we had a season. I was in there every single day, multiple times a day. So that's a, that's an adjustment too. Like you go from, oh yeah, I don't really need to stretch. I don't need to do this or that. I don't need to worry about, you, have to you know, go. I see myself when I go home at night. You get to college, like eventually it catches up with you. Like it's just, you can't avoid it. Yeah. So uh, we want to, Transition. We talked enough about ourselves here, so we want to transition 
talk about you know current events in the world of basketball. Obviously, the biggest one being NBA playoffs. Um, so we wanted to recap a little bit, a little bit about the NBA playoffs and give a preview also of the NBA finals. Important to note here. So today is Wednesday, May thirtieth, thirty first. How many days are in May? I don't know. Yeah. Tomorrow is Game One of the NBA Finals. It's yeah. Thursday, June first. By the time people are watching this, probably be two, maybe three games will have been completed uh, yeah. by the time you see this. So just keep that in mind. We're talking from the perspective of the finals has not happened yet. Yeah. We do know, obviously, at this point, it's Nuggets Heat. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that yeah. going into it. Game one is tomorrow. Game one tomorrow for us. Yes. Yeah, but this will be coming out probably. They're probably two games in, maybe three games in. Two, so maybe three. Let's see if we're. Yeah, so keep in mind, we're also going to try to do a poll somewhere. Uh, yeah, just yeah. We, want, we want to get the viewers' opinion, who who they think is going to come out on top, Heat versus Nuggets. Uh, so we're going to get that out to everybody. But kick it off, we wanted to play a little game. We wanted to look at some years past NBA playoffs. We wanted to see test our memories a little bit and see how much we can remember from a random year that we can pick uh, and see how much of the bracket we can remember. So game here, NBA bracket playoff game. So I have picked a random year from years past the NBA. Uh, I've drawn out my little makeshift bracket here. Hope you guys like it. Uh, I gave Ryan the teams of who's in there. And with the seeds. With the seeds. He's got to pick the winners. And then he's got, I got to see how many gets right. And then I'm going to go. He's going to pick a different year. And we're going to see how many, who gets more right. So the year for this, Ryan, are you ready? Mm-hmm. The year for this is 2017. So take us through it. Give, give, us, give, give us your best guess. 2017. So obviously the Warriors won that year. This is their first year with KD, right? Correct. So I guess we'll start with the West because that's the easiest. Obviously the Warriors are going to take all these. Yep. Um, but well, you right lefty too. Too. I'm a lefty. Yeah, both of us, right? Well, I right righty, but I shoot lefty. He's weird. That's I am why. weird. Um, Clippers, Jazz. Should be this is your first tough one here. 2017. Mm. I don't think this is the year the Jazz beat the Rockets. I mean, the Jazz beat the Thunder in the second round, so that's not what I'm going off. I think that was 2018. Well, it's not because they, they play the Warriors. In this, oh, yes. Okay. All right, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Um, okay, let me just go back to the East. Ah, yeah, I was <laughs> guessing. What, what you right, on? So, you obviously, on? it was Warriors-Cavs again. So, let's take the Cavs. That's fair. Work, work your way around the way you want to work it around. That's fine. Oh, wow. This is a bad one. For you me. can take them all the way if you want. Okay, that's fine. Let me write them out. The, write it in how you want. Let me get the Warriors going, too. There you go. All right, man. This is tough. <laughs> all right, the champ in here in the square, right? Yeah, in the square, in the square. See, you caught up on that. That was good. <laughs> All right, bro. All right. So, ah, this is bad. See, like, is this the year like the Grizzlies beat the Spurs in the first round in seven? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Wizards, Hawks. I'm pretty sure the Wizards won that because I think that was Paul Pierce's banking shot, baby. Oh wow! I'm gonna go Wizards. Let's that'll be the first pick. He's gonna go Wizards. He's gonna he's gonna rock it. Right? Go Wizards there. I'm assuming the Celtics beat the Bulls in the one eight. I think that was Dwayne Wade on the Bulls in that time era. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, how else are they making that playoff? D Rose, I think, is back around that time. Okay. Is D Rose still? I think D Rose was still there in 2018. Well, yeah. Mm, ah, I, don't the Knicks, dude. I don't know, actually. <laughs> uh, we know we're not seeing the Knicks on here. No. Um, okay, I'm going to go Raptors, Bucks. I'm taking the Raptors, I think. Okay. And then they lose to the Cavs, Lebronto, right? LeBron. <laughs> That's not the year, I don't think. But It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, that was 20. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go Celtics. I'm going to say it was Celtics, Cavs in the mm-hmm. semis. Okay. I think that's because I think that's like okay. Tatum's rookie year. Or no, was he twenty eighteen? I mean twenty eighteen. Mm. Yeah, I think that's wrong. That's all right. Um, 
I'm gonna be honest. I don't think the Thunder beat the Rockets in the first round. Like as <laughs> you are a Thunder fan, as I would, much as I, love, I would hope this is the one you get. As much as I love the Thunder, they did not beat the Rockets in this round. You just wrote the Thunder. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because I want. I guess yeah, I, you want, want, you I wanted them. Me. I wanted them. Yeah, I was but... talking. He's like, man, I wish. First year without me. KD, there's no way they beat the Rockets. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Russ averaged a triple double that year. Yeah, that year they didn't go far. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, who did the Warriors see in round two? That's what I don't know. Um, eh, taking too long with this. I'm gonna go with the. I'm going with the Clippers. And then, did it the Clippers actually give the Warriors a run for their money? We'll see. Okay, we'll find out. Dude, the Spurs Grizzlies won. I really think the Grizzlies upsetted them. But I'm gonna go Spurs. No, <laughs> I'm going Grizzlies. Then I'm going Grizzlies. Go I don't your, care. Go I'm man. going go Grizzlies. Then Rockets. Okay. All right. All right. So you got Warriors. Obviously, is right. Jazz beat the Clippers. Jazz beat the Clippers in seven. Believe it or not. Wow. Rockets did win. Yeah. Russell Westbrook couldn't carry the money further that year. The Grizzlies did not. They did the Spurs this year. No. This then the, the then year. the Spurs went to the conference finals then. The Spurs went to the conference Dang. finals. And this is the year. This is the year where Kawhi landed on Zaza's foot in game one of the Western Conference Finals. So the Spurs got all the way here. Uh, they beat the Rockets. Warriors beat the Jazz. And over here, you were perfect. Perfect. You right. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. I think it was sports. You got. So we're going to go. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Pretty. I was pretty solid. I mean, you aced the East. And I started getting nervous. Then you went with like the Grizzlies and Rockets. And you know why I knew the East better? Because I tough. as no as sad as the Knicks season was, I did watch the East more, and oh. I knew the East pretty well. The East was kind of easy to tell too, because obviously you know the Cavs and the Celtics did go far that year. And I remember, I'm pretty sure you can correct, I think that was Paul Pierce's shot in that Wizards, unless it's what, not. What, the I called game one? The I called game no, one. No, he was with the Mavericks. Uh, no, he was definitely with the Wizards. I just don't know if that no, was that. No, I'll take Carter, sorry. I'm bugging. All right, well, you got 12. That was pretty That's good not round. bad. I'm pretty okay with that. Paul you asked it. me that two years ago, I would have got it. It's Gordon's turn. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> um, same rules, right? Same, same rules, rules, same order, same format. Your year is 2013. 2013. 2013. I was in eighth grade. All right. Yeah, 2013. You're, you're right. I am old. Well, what grade were you in? 2013. I was in fifth grade. Fifth grade. That's horrifying. All right. Well, I know in 2013, that is the Heat repeat. So the Heat won the NBA Finals that year. And I know they beat the Spurs in the Mike Breen famous rebound Bosch back at that's, the uh, that's why corner. I, I picked it. <laughs> So I'm picking Heat all the way right here. The Heat, this is not neat at all, but it's all right. That's all right. And I know the Spurs got there. Spurs are in the finals versus Heat. That's correct. They spanked pretty much everybody in the West, honestly. So I know that much. Um, So I'll go up here, Thunder Rockets. I'm almost positive the Rockets upset the Thunder this year because I believe KD got hurt the year after the finals. So I got the Rockets winning this series. I think they won in six. Clippers, Grizzlies. I appreciate sure the Grizz won this because I think the Grizzlies beat the Rockets and went to the conference finals. I think that was the uh, Zach Randolph, Mark Gasol, Mike Conley show. Nuggets, Warriors. This was the, I believe this was the coming out party for the Golden State Warriors this year. This was the first year they kind of came onto the scene. So I believe they upset the Nuggets. This is the beginning of uh, the Splash Bros and the Warrior Dynasty. Spurs did beat the Warriors. Grizzlies beat the Rockets. And then the Spurs smoked the Grizzlies in the Western Conference Finals. Over here, this went to seven. So I'm struggling with this at the moment. But I know the Pacers won this versus the Hawks. Paul George, Lance Stevenson. I think Danny Granger was still with them. I could be wrong, though. Roy Hibbert, maybe, right? Or Roy Hibbert was definitely on the squad back when we thought Roy Hibbert was good. Shout out Roy Hibbert. Shout out Roy Hibbert. Big shout out. I wonder what he's doing now. Can only imagine. 
Uh, Knicks Celtics. Knicks actually won a playoff series this year. I do remember this. They beat the Celtics. The Celtics finally got old. Paul Pierce, KG. Uh, yeah, they were done so. But then the Knicks, being the Knicks, made sure to lose in the second round. They lost in six to the Pacers. So the Pacers did get to the conference finals. This Nets Bull series. <sighs> I know it went to seven. I, remember, I was at an Applebee's when the game was being played. I don't know why I remember that. I just do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Bulls. I think the Bulls won this in seven. All right, how'd I do? All right. How'd I do? Oh, you're done. I'm done. Okay, so you got... Um, let's go with the East first. You obviously got Heat Bulls. Uh, yeah, Heat Bulls. Um... Pacers Knicks is correct, and then the Pacers did beat the Knicks, and the Heat did beat the Bulls, and the Heat beat the Pacers in seven. I do remember that. I do so remember that. The Heat made it obviously versus the Spurs. The, in the Pacers finals. played them tough that year. I remember that. And this is karma for all these years of you disrespecting my Thunder. They did not lose to the Rockets. They beat the Rockets in six. The Thunder beat the Rockets in six. Yes, wow. they did, and then they got killed by Memphis. Did they really? Memphis beat him in five. Wow, I thought I had that. So, the only one wrong, everything else is right. So, you only got my team wrong. So, how many? So, that's, so I got this wrong. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen for the Dubsky. What did I get? You got twelve. All right, so that was just a little, little fun uh, game. We're going to we're gonna do a lot of games moving forward, but I have to mix it up a little bit. You don't have to sit here and talk the whole time, but. Uh, Nice to see I came out on top. 1-0 on the year. Mark it down in the record books. Uh, so I want to transition now into uh, NBA playoffs this year, right? So obviously lots to unpack. NBA playoffs starts beginning of April, goes all the way through uh, you know mid to late June. Uh, we know we have a Heat Nuggets final. We don't know anything yet. Um, Going to be a couple games played here in the next few days. Uh, but I guess just first off, like, like what, what things like stuck out to you about the finals or the playoffs so far, just in general? Like what, what are like, the bigs? The big takeaways you have from it. So I'm going to go in order. So we'll start with the play-in. Sure. I'm going to get a lot of shade for this. I don't care. I consider the play-in the playoffs. A lot of people say it's not. I don't, I don't disagree. I don't which disagree. is whatever, right? That's fine. But how I view it as people that play in the play-in game get a game that people that got eliminated don't. So I view that as a playoff game. I kind of view that as like a wild card in the MLB. No, that's I, how I, see I, don't I don't disagree. A lot of people say that's not a playoff game because it's not a series. I disagree with that. I think it's a playoff game because it's a game that some teams don't have the opportunity of getting. I, I, I agree. Okay. I think I would. I don't disagree with what you said. So let's look at the East first, right? Heat on the brink of elimination, lose to the Hawks like badly too. Like lost to the Hawks pretty badly, and then almost lost to the Bulls. Yep, which would have eliminated them. <laughs> Obviously, now they're in the finals with a yeah. chance to make history. Yep. Upset the Bucks. Upset, the, upset Knicks, the Bucks. The Celtics. Beat the Knicks. Beat the Celtics. From like worst to first, basically. Yeah. And obviously, the famous Jimmy quote saying that he was going to be in the same position the following year. And Amazing it was thing. exactly a year into the future. I do want to say, too, about the Heat. And we were at Hurricane Wings when you said it. Exact words were, nah, man, Jimmy's not Hemi anymore. Because I said Hemi Butler, and your exact words were that he's not Hemi anymore. He's Hemi. He is Hemi Butler. I will say this. He's a phenomenal player. Do you want, do you but, want to apologize for, to, to Jimmy? Apologize I'll to apologize Jimmy. if he wins the finals. Because here's not- the thing. He had a phenomenal supporting cast. Has he not been the best player on the team by far, though? He's the best player on the team, as he should be. He's bro, a superstar. He's, he's getting been, paid the most. Bro. But that's not the issue. The issue is I can't call Jimmy Hemi if, if Gabe Vincent is carrying them in two games in a row. Like, they don't get to that. Bro. If, if it's not Jimmy, for Gabe Vincent. Jimmy has been unreal in the playoffs. He has been, but I, can't call, him, I can't call him that guy. Oh yeah, he's not God. Hemi. Oh, he's he's Hemi. phenomenal. He's, he's great. Hemi. He's Hemi. <laughs> but I don't know if he's had a better playoff than Jokic. It's very close to Jokic, but you'd be hard-pressed. I mean, maybe Jamal Murray. You'd be really hard-pressed to find somebody else. Yeah, actually, I, I calling, wouldn't accept anybody else. Nobody's calling Jokic mm-hmm. Hemi. Because Jimmy Hemi, I mean, just run. Yeah. 
I just think Jokic has been better than Butler. No shade to Butler, but Bro, I would need just, to just see just him. Just apologize to Jimmy for the fact that you said he wasn't Himmy, and he's been hooping all playoffs all right. in a big uh, time way. Let's go to the West. Um, shout out to the Thunder. Here we go for beating the Pelicans <laughs> in the Smoothie King Center. What a comeback, and what professionalism like at the end. Game. Dude, they were like trailing up and down. Shout out to we Lou were Dort. for a good chunk of that game. Lou Dort sure. for outstanding defense. You Lou guys don't really care about this, whatever. But they they beat the Pelicans, and then they lost to the Timberwolves. But you know, they... no, it was a good step in the right direction for the Thunder. Bright really future. Building. I know you guys don't want to hear anything else about that. That's whatever. That's something I'll brag about in a couple of years when they win it in twenty twenty five. Then you look more into the West, right? The Timberwolves win that, and they get in as the seven. No, Timberwolves got in as the eight. As the eight. The Lakers, the Lakers got, got in as the seven because mm-hmm. they beat – They beat the Timberwolves first. The Timberwolves first on, on the, the – uh, On the Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson? No, no Dennis Schroeder, three. Dennis Schroeder, three, but then AD fouled Conley. Conley hits all three, went, and then they smoked him in OT. Yeah, then they beat him in time. Um, I'm not, like, trying to brag. I knew the Lakers were going to get – to where they got with that team, I knew they were going to. They were playing. Beat. They were the hottest team in the league probably at that time, you know. And they made a lot of great moves at the deadline. Obviously, uh-huh. you know, just team clicked at the right time. So I guess it's not all that shocking. Plus the Grizzlies in the first round, just total dumpster fire. Poking the bear. Second, yeah, just you know, Dylan Brooks gonna be playing for the Shanghai Sharks next year. Uh, John Morant's playing around with guns, trying to show he's hard like that, or whatever. <laughs> Uh, you know, they're doing like the the walkout dance like before the game and you know, get smoked in six by uh LeBron and the Lakers. But yeah, Lakers are playing great basketball down the stretch of the season. Uh and then yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I thought the Suns were gonna make the finals. I picked them to make I, the finals. I agree. And to me, what I was gonna say is I thought the Suns were the biggest disappointment in the playoffs. Now I know the Bucks were the one, they lost the Heat. Yeah, but Giannis was hurt. Giannis was no hurt. No one was hurt with Phoenix. And you know what? Look, look at the Heat right now. Heat are Heat are hooping. <laughs> Big heat are real. The heat are real. Heat are real. You, know, you can't you can't blame the Heat's win off Giannis's injury. Right. There's a chance they still would have beat them if Giannis was fully sure. healthy. The Suns, though, to me, with all that talent on the team, and I don't even think it's just the top half. I think it's a pretty good team, top to bottom. A team who two years ago was a game or two games away from winning the finals. They go to seven or six of the Bucks. They lost in six of the Bucks. They lost won the first the Bucks. two. Bucks won the next four. The next in a row. four. So they're two games away, two wins away from the finals two years ago. Then last year, season ends disappointing when they get smoked on their home court in Game 7 versus the Mavs. You would think that team is, like, chomping at the bit, hungry as hell to get back to the finals. And to be honest, I thought their roster this year was better than previous rosters. I, I, would I thought absolutely they had a deeper you. roster. KD, and they added KD. KD, Booker, Aiton, a washed-up Chris Paul, but still Chris Paul. Like, I don't know, to me, that team should have been way hungrier and obviously had a ton of talent on it. And... Even like they, they won the Clippers series and they did win two games in the Nuggets series, but throughout the whole playoffs they just seemed like they formed that super team too late. I think they formed it too late. They didn't get the chance to gel, mm-hmm. and you know a lot of but something like wrong like in the locker in there because like they just looked like they didn't look like they. I just don't think they, they had, had like a great game plan. Like, like no no <clears throat> hate to Monty Williams, but like I think they could have had a better game plan a little bit. Like I felt like it was almost like let Probably. the stars let the stars do their thing. And yeah, it was like you know, and yeah, there it's multiple ball dominant players. KD, Booker, Chris Paul are all like pretty ball dominant guys. So, like I guess it's tough to space out, but it just it just seemed like they lacked that like killer edge to want to get there. And I really thought the Suns after mm-hmm. like the last couple of years would have had a bit more of an edge going to the playoffs. And I too, yeah. if I were to pick one team in the West to go to come out of the West for the finals, I would have picked them. Uh, but hey, look, the Nuggets. Are legit. I mean, we knew the Nuggets were legit, but the Nuggets definitely probably an underappreciated team relative to how good of a season they've had this Super year. Super underappreciated, and I think it's because of their past and because of their mm-hmm. players. I don't. Understand. They always lose in the playoffs, right? So everyone's yeah. assuming they're going to lose, and their players aren't all like. I don't want to say it like this, but like not in the they're, long way. They're not like showboaty and no. like fan, you know, no. entertaining stuff like that. Jokic like, is from some. They're like, strictly business. Yeah. Whereas other players are like fan a lot oriented, more flashy. Yeah. but they're not fan oriented, so they don't get the publicity that no. they should. But no. you know they will if they win them. 
Hey, listen, they played phenomenal versus the Lakers. I mean, they, they shot the lights out of the ball, and I think it goes into, like, I think it's safe to say, most people are picking the Nuggets to win this finals for seed. I think, you know, the quote-unquote experts are picking the Nuggets, and it's partially because of how well the players are like. I mean, I thought they played phenomenally. But honestly, for me, like, I look at it as the way they shot the ball, and I know, obviously, they're a super high-powered offensive team. They've been really good all year in offense, but, like, can they repeat, can they keep that going versus the, like they played so well like is there going to be like a little bit of a letdown I feel like that's that's where I like doubts are creeping in my mind like picking them because it's like it almost feels like they cannot possibly replicate what they did versus the Lakers. So I did some thinking about it. This is the only way I think the Heat can beat the Nuggets. Right? Obviously the Nuggets are heavy favorites as they should be. They've walked through the playoffs. Yeah. Um. I think Bam. Would have to really disturb Jokic yeah. as much as possible. Goes that same. I think Duncan Robinson and Max Struess need to shoot the lights out. And I think Jimmy has to show up every game. Every mm-hmm. single game. Yeah. Like, seven games, four <clears throat> games. He needs to be himmy every knowledge. game. And then whatever you get from Gabe Vincent, you get. Dude, like, he's, no, yeah, he's, he's been that guy. But, tough. like, even if he scores, like, eight one night, you should still be able to win that. Yeah. You shouldn't be counting on 20 from Gabe Vincent. No. Not Gabe Vincent. Uh, Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin. Gabe Vincent is also great. Gabe Vincent's been awesome. So, Gabe Vincent's been great for them. Between Gabe Vincent and um, Martin, you need some productivity there, but you should be able to get it done in a night where they have – one of them have an off night. Yeah. You should still have enough power, but you need to play a lot of defense. Yeah. A lot of defense on them because they hit everything. Listen, obviously. Jokic is gonna get off. The difference is you gotta hold them to like, and you know, easier said than done, right? You gotta hold them to like. If he scores like twenty five, that's completely different than him getting like thirty five or forty. Your goal should be to not let him get a triple double. Yeah, like, yeah. Honestly, I mean, it's if tough with the rebounds and and like whatnot, but like, if he doesn't get a triple double, you have a chance. Yeah, because if a role player goes off. That's fine because yeah, hopefully right. a Heat role player goes off. Right, right. You just got to be able to try to limit Jokic. Yeah, Murray's great too. That's I don't think Murray is as successful in this series as he was with the Lakers, though. I, I do that. think the Heat preach more defense than the Lakers. Yes, I would agree. So I wouldn't expect crazy scoring numbers, but the Heat got to get hot. Heat got to get hot, but no also the Heat have been playing. The Nuggets have had a bunch of time off. Could it be like too much time off, like almost like rusty? Like I think it's an advantage. It could be. I think having could time be. off is an advantage in the playoffs because your bodies are probably shot after sure. a seven game series. So I think the Heat are at a severe disadvantage coming off seven games. Nuggets have already been off for what five days, six days. Yeah, they're practicing. It's not like they're sitting around. They're doing practicing, nothing. but it's not the same as being. Engaged, and they get home yeah. advantage. I yeah. think they're. They have everything going for them to win this. Sure. It's the Nuggets series to lose. He have no business being here. They got to play with nothing to lose, and sure. that might give them a chance. I mean, they're an eight seed. I mean, I think it's the first time an eight seed has been to the finals. I mean, at least in our lifetime, I can't think of an eight that got there. Maybe. I don't even know. I think they're the first. It was also interesting, too, obviously, the Heat just got done beating the Celtics. He were up 3-0. We almost saw our first ever in NBA history 3-0 comeback. We were pretty close. Now, granted, the Heat took care of business versus the Celtics. And I said this to you during yeah. uh, during the series. I was like, you know, I could see the Celtics claw on their way back, but I could see, like, that letdown in Game 7 because it's like they fought so hard to get all the way there. They finally get the home game, Game 7. Everyone thinks all the pressure's on Miami. I think it's almost the other way. I think the pressure's on Boston, and I think it showed. Obviously, Tatum got hurt. Some other things just didn't go their way. But I thought it was thought it was noteworthy worth bringing up like yeah. we almost saw a 3-0 comeback as great as the heat played in the first three games the celtics played great the next three definitely Derek white with a tip in in game six um, that's one of the craziest moments ever wild we were on facetime while i was going on um <laughs> but yeah wild moment so yeah i thought that was worth bringing up the celtics are obviously an interesting case study for the offseason because we'll talk about offseason stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Ones. yeah all the celtics we'll fans i'm sure season are... opinions and who should yeah. go where and all the Celtics fans, I'm sure, are, are screaming, game. screaming for heads. Free Dame, free Dame, free Dame. Yeah. Come over to the Thunder. There's room or the Knicks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, wherever he goes. But yeah, no. So I think we're both on the same page. Like Nuggets, 
I think we both, if you you know put a gun to our head, we we both pick Nuggets. In this I series. would guess Nuggets in six, but just off like the fate of making history, I mm. want to go Heat in seven. That's like it, it feels wrong because everybody's going with Nuggets. And so as, like, an NBA, <laughs> as an NBA fan, you want to see more games. Like sure. I want to see a game. Seven. You want to see a good series, yeah. but that's all that matters. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, Hemi Butler, Hemi Butler might be able to pull through. We'll see what happens. And then if he wins, you'll have to call if him. If he wins, he earns his stripes. That's you'll have to call him Hemi right on this show. And then when the Nuggets win in six, we can come back on the next pod and I can tell you how he's not Hemi. He'll still be Hemi. It's just you won't have to openly admit it on the camera. But anyways, all right. So we're just going to go totally switch gears here, finish up for the show. We're going to play movie rates. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to give Ryan – a movie, and he has to choose where on this list of five he's going to rate it. But he doesn't know what's coming next. So if I say, you know, I don't know, Toy Story, Ryan goes, ah, I'm going to put it at three because I think, uh, you know, you're going to have two better movies and two worse movies coming down the road. And then at the end, we're going to compare who got the rankings more accurate. So you go first. I'm going to rank. I'm going to try to guess. Where do I, where do I think? Right. What do I think you're going to give me here? So. All right, I got some movies here. All right. Go. First one, Cars. cars. Disney Pixar Cars, just a Cars movie. Lightning McQueen. Where are you gonna put that? Cars, very solid, very solid Disney movie. Iconic uh, movie. I know a favorite of Ryan's. So this is this is tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna go neutral. I'm gonna go three for Cars. Okay. I think I think there's better to come, but it's still a very solid one. So I'm I'm gonna hang out at three for now. Okay. Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame. The last one. Yes, I know. <laughs> the last Endgame. Obviously, iconic. Long. Probably one of my favorite movies ever. That and Cars. You're just going with all your favorites. Avengers Endgame. Man, that is... That is tough. I'm going to go Avengers Endgame at two. I still think you got something bigger in the bag. Okay. So, I'm going to go Avengers at two. Chicken Little. <laughs> Chicken Little, you know... I gotta say, I'm going that at five. Uh, what? You know, I, I don't consider that one of the greats. Uh, funny, but uh, I'm gonna have to go Chicken Little Five. I think that's the runt of the group here. So, you go Chicken Little Five. Elf. But Will Ferrell. Elf. Elf. Christmas. Movie. I have no problem putting this number one. Elf to me is phenomenal, outstanding. Okay. Um, so this will be your four. This will be my four, and I might have, you know, I might, I might have, but I'm willing to live with Alpha number one. Christmas movie, maybe the best Christmas movie there is. Will Ferrell's hysterical. I do think the Home Alones are better than Alpha. Oh, I disagree. I disagree. But all right, let me hear the last one. Karate Kid. Nah, see, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. Karate Kid, obviously iconic, but I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with the OG Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. I don't know about the elf one, but I think the rest of the list see, is pretty see, good. But here's I the would thing. maybe if I would I'd switch elf in Avengers. If I had put elf at four, though, Karate Kid at one, I feel like this would be so much worse of a list. I think you could have got away with that. I could have got away with it, but I think I could... Karate Kid is more iconic than elf. I don't know, man. I don't know either. This is the su- this is the summertime, so you know maybe maybe if we were in the Christmas spirit, elf would be different. But all right, all right so now I'm gonna go I get for the you. Marker now, right? You got the marker, so here you go. Nice. All right, let me just let me just look up what I got here for you because I, I picked some. Some interesting ones for you. All right, so first one. Yeah. Ready to go. All right, adjusting this microphone there. Very nice. All right, first one on the docket, The Lion King. It's funny you bring up The Lion King, Mm. and I'm going to get so much hate for it. That's like the most well-known movie I've never seen. Interesting. I've never, and I've always been told to see Ah. it. It's like, nice. (laughs) It's, obviously, I know it's really well-known. I have never seen it. Mm. I know about it, but I've never seen it. So based off me, I have to put that kind of low. So I'm gonna put that at like four. Okay. I'm okay All with right. that. I and I'll be honest, even after I watch it, I'll probably still have it at four. I don't think it's all that from what I've heard and seen clips of. But I've never seen the movie in full, so Fair enough. Fair enough. Next one. Rocky Four. So Rocky Yo. Four. Rocky Four, obviously the iconic Russian Drago, Rocky, I think, in my personal opinion, the best Rocky. But The best Rocky, it's not even close, but so, what Rocky do you got? is phenomenal, probably in my top five, but I can't put that at one. I'm going to put it at two. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay, fair enough. 
fair enough. Great movie. Next up on the docket, we got Jaws. Summertime. Jaws sucks. I'm going to go five. Jaws. Bro, Jaws is terrible. Bro, you're bugging. Bro, Jaws is terrible. Jaws, Jaws, Jaws. Jaws is like a slightly better version of like Sharknado. That's Dude. criminal. That is a criminal Jaws? statement you just made. Every no. person over 40 wants to stab you right now. Absolutely not, dude. <laughs> Jaws? Jaws is iconic. Would you put Jaws over Lion King? 100%. 100%. Jaws? Bro, we can go Jaws look at, a better, you know, just a slightly better version of Sharknado? We can look at uh, Rotten Tomatoes with the ratings. There's no Bro, way. Rotten Tomatoes sucks. They There's, don't know anything. Okay, look at any Rotten movie. Is terrible. Bro, look at any movie critic. They are not going to put Jaws Bro. over Lion King. Jaws is iconic. Jaws is iconic, bro. Wow. Right, that's right. that's a that's a bad one. I'm sorry. Okay. Alright. Next one. Because we saw it recently in theaters. Super Mario Bros. Where you got this one? You kinda put yourself in a tough no, spot I didn't. here. No, I didn't. Because obviously it's not one, but it's a funny movie and it's really good if you grew up playing Mario. So it's it's kind of funny, yeah, but it's a kids movie, and it's definitely not better than those two. It's definitely better than Jaws. I've seen Jaws, so I can do that. <sighs> it's awesome. probably not better than The Lion King, according to the general population. But I've never seen Lion King, so I'm gonna put the Mario one at three, and that's okay. That's fine. I hope this one is phenomenal. So your last one here, and this is a great one: a SpongeBob SquarePants movie. <laughs> okay. Um, so you got to put that at one. Now yeah, I'm not. I'm yeah. not really criticizing it's, that. I'm not okay, really criticizing. Okay. Rocky Four should probably be a, okay. Should probably be ahead of it. All right, I'll say this: if I had to redo the list, I would only switch Rocky and SpongeBob. And I'm gonna get some shade for that because because Jaws of Five is apparently pretty. Jaws is really good. I don't like Jaws like that, and I think the Mario movie was great. And I'm not gonna relate to Lion King as much as the Mario movie. I like the Mario movie. I think that's. I don't Wait, even have a problem with honestly, this one, one. If we both switch our one and two, I think this is pretty good. Yeah, I have to agree. I have to agree. I mean, Chicken Little for me, an easy bottom, easy five. You know, Cars and Karate Kid, you can you can toy That's with. That's honestly fine. That's like a flip flop. You know, flip a coin, do whatever. And then Elf and Avengers, like, you know, take your poison. I have no problem with your SpongeBob number one. I thought the SpongeBob SquarePants movie was SpongeBob movie phenomenal. was great. Probably would not have it above Rocky. Rocky but, Four, but you would have that above Mario, hundred percent, and Lion King, hundred percent, and Jaws. It's close with Jaws. Close with Jaws. I probably would take it over Jaws just from the, the childhood sentimental value for me. You know, I'm a well, because you're old. Like that's not a childhood movie for me. That's that is for you because you, you're old. That is hundred percent a childhood movie for you. What age were you when that came out? What movie? What year? The SpongeBob movie. Oh, what are you talking about Jaws? No, the SpongeBob oh, movie. I, Jaws I, came I, out in like the seventies. What are you talking about? Okay. SpongeBob movie, bro. SpongeBob movie's my childhood. Bro, I thought you were talking about. Jaws. I wasn't even a thought in my parents' mind when Jaws came out. Anyways, all right. So, I mean, I don't know if we can declare. I don't know if we can declare. I think a it's a tie. To be honest, I, I gotta say, like you know, no, there's no clear winner here. Um, pretty right. good movies though. Pretty solid. Good selections. Pretty good. All right, so that's a wrap on our first ever show of Swing the Salt. I'm here. With, I'm Gordon Scholler. This is Ryan McNeely. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube or subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, please you know, like, follow, comment, subscribe. We appreciate any support you can give us. Um, try to get a poll out there to you for the NBA Finals. We want to see, you know, take the temperature, whatever thinks, Nuggets versus Heat. You can find that on our Instagram. Uh, at Swing the Salt. Everything is at Swing yeah. the Salt. No no spaces, no numbers, no caps, no nothing. Just Let swing us know, the salt. Though, like, what like, you want us to talk about. Like, we can talk about a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So, like, you can give leave us feedback. Us. Yeah, yeah, give us feedback. How do you think this went? Like, could we do something differently? You know, do you want us to get something else? What games do you have in mind? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. We are, we are open to suggestions and, uh, yeah, appreciate, appreciate any support ahead of time. And, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Peace out. Thank you.